The first look at Assassin, the last movie Bruce Willis starred in before retiring, just came out. Sabin Films gave the public its first look at the upcoming sci-fi action thriller starring Willis, which showed the actor holding a gun in the street while filming. Jesse Atlas is in charge of Assassin, and it is his first time directing a full-length movie. Aaron Wolf and producer Jeff Elliott will be alongside as his producers, and the movie is based on their short film, Let Them Die by Lovers. Let's start off with first look at Bruce Willis's last movie assassin surfaces online. Bruce Willis may be out of the movie business for health reasons, but the last two films he is known to have made will be released in 2023. One of them is Assassin, for which the first image of the actor was just released. Last year, it was announced that Willis, who has been one of Hollywood's most famous action stars for 30 years, would stop acting because he has aphasia, a language disorder that affects cognitive skills and makes it hard to do things like speak, listen, read, and write. Since then, Willis's family has occasionally posted photos of him on social media. In these photos, he can be seen having fun with his five daughters, and some of them are from the holidays with his ex-wife, Demi Moore. As for Willis's most recent movies, Assassin was talked about in USA Today's 2023 movie preview. The news story had a picture of the actor holding a gun in another classic action role role like the ones he has always been known for. Like most of Willis's recent movies, Assassin, which is being released by Sabin Films, will only be shown in theaters in a few places, and will also be available on video on demand starting March 31st. In the summer of 2021, the movie Assassin was shot. That's not all. Detective Night Independence, the third movie in the series, will come out in 2023. It will be made by Lionsgate. Detective Night Independence comes out in limited theaters on January 20th of 2023. This is the same kind of release that was popular at the end of the actor's career. Usually, a low-budget action thriller directed by a first-timer like Jesse Atlas wouldn't get much attention. However, this one stands out because it's the actor's last job. Willis's last big movie roles were in M. Night Shyamalan's Glass and Motherless Brooklyn, both of which came out in 2019. He also has a cameo in The Lego Movie 2, the second part, but most of his work since 2014 has been in direct to video movies. Even though Willis has been out of the public eye for a while, rumors spread that he was selling his deepfake likeness, but his representatives quickly said that the deal was not going to happen. People always bring up Willis's name when they argue about whether or not Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Recently, the actor posted a joke denying this on his Instagram account. Still, if you think a direct to video movie isn't a great way for such a big star to go out, Willis has made a lot of great movies that you can go see. The knucklehead career decision that Bruce Willis still regrets. Willis has been in a number of well-known movies, but there is one that got away. In 1990, Willis was in Die Hard 2, which was one of the biggest hits of the year. He also had the chance to be in Ghost, which was the highest grossing movie of the year. The movie had such an impact that it was once the third highest grossing title of all time, making $500 million at the box office. In addition to making a lot of money, Ghost was nominated for a number of awards and two Oscars. Willis had the chance to play the main character, Sam Wheat, in Ghost, but that role went to the late Patrick Swayze and became one of his most famous movies. But when he got the script, Willis didn't see what was so great about it, and it turned out to be one of his biggest career mistakes. He may feel even worse about it because he was also in the bonfire of the Vanities, which was one of the worst movies of 1990 and starred Brian De Palma. In an interview with the New York Times in 1996, Willis Willis said that when he first read the script for the movie, he just didn't get it. He explains, I told him, hey, that guy is dead. How are you going to find a love interest? Willis called himself a knucklehead in another place because he turned down Ghost. In another interview, he said, I wish I hadn't turned down the role that Patrick Swayze ended up playing in Ghost. I just couldn't see how a relationship between a ghost and a living person could work. Duh. Willis also said that it would have been nice to work with Demi Moore again. Even though Willis didn't understand Ghost at first, he said, I like that movie. Why Bruce Willis has stepped away from acting. Willis's family said earlier last year that he was retiring because he had been diagnosed with aphasia. 
This is a condition that makes it hard for the brain to understand language, which has made it harder and harder for him to do his job. People who have worked closely with Willis in the past few years have expressed worries about his mental health. Randall Emmett, a producer who worked with Willis on more than 20 movies, said that the actor needed his lines to be fed to him through an earpiece. Others on the set of White Elephant, which will be released in 2022, said that the actor seemed confused and even asked, why am I here? Willis's decision to stop acting comes after a long and successful career, which shows how much he loves movies. The actor didn't come to this decision easily. His family said that his career meant a lot to him. Even though Bruce Willis has retired, he has three movies in the works that have already finished filming. This gives fans a chance to see him on screen one last time. Deepfake technology has already been used successfully in several Star Wars movies to de-age actors or create performance performances from actors who have died. As the technology continues to improve and become more common, it will be interesting to see how ethics and rights of digital twins will play out. Finally, as a bonus, M. Night Shyamalan pays tribute to Bruce Willis with Sixth Sense BTS Story. The famous director M. Night Shyamalan told a touching story from behind the scenes on the set of The Sixth Sense. It was about the famous actor Bruce Willis, who worked with Shyamalan often. The famous 1999 horror film was the first time the actor and director team worked together. Since then, they have made Unbreakable and Glass. Willis was tragically diagnosed with aphasia, a condition affecting language cognition, and it was announced in March of 2022 that he would be retiring from acting. Jake's Takes asked Shyamalan about his work with Willis and his legacy as an actor during an interview that was part of a press tour for the final season of his critically acclaimed Apple TV Plus show, Servant. Shyamalan was quick to praise the veteran, and he remembered that Willis had given him a huge compliment by saying that The Sixth Sense was like Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction, which is considered to be one of the best movies ever made and in which Willis played one of his most famous roles. He said, I grew up with him as a blue collar hero, and not just me, Quentin Tarantino, Wes Anderson, Fifth Element, you name it. Every time, he took risks and just went for it. When he believed in you, he stood right behind you. Shyamalan recalled the first Friday of Sixth Sense when he was told that Bruce Willis wanted to talk to him in his trailer. He thought Bruce was going to scream at him. Luckily for him, it did not happen. Once you were on his good side, he was like your big brother and would fight for you no matter what. Bruce Willis and M. Night Shyamalan's collaborations explained. Willis and Shyamalan worked on three movies together over the course of their careers, but their first film may be the one that people remember the most. Most people agree that The Sixth Sense has one of the best plot twists of all time, and that it is one of the best horror films ever made. Willis plays the main character, a troubled child psychologist named Malcolm Crow. Haley Joel Osment plays the child star, Cole Sear, who says he can talk to the dead. The praise for the movie, which was considered Shyamalan's best work and was nominated for six Oscars, and for one of Willis's best roles, led the two to meet the next year. Unbreakable is the first movie in Shyamalan's only trilogy so far. The second movie wouldn't be made for another 16 years. Willis leads again, this time as the sole survivor of a tragic train crash, David Dunn. The movie, in which Willis stars with Pulp Fiction co-star Samuel Samuel L. Jackson is a take on comic books. Willis plays a superhero whose bones can't be broken. Unbreakable was made long before the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Only a few comic book movies were made in the 20th century, so it could be seen as one of the first superhero movies. It has a great twist ending and gives superpowers a real place in the world in a way that few movies have done since. Glass, which came out in 2019, was the last part of the Unbreakable trilogy. It connected the 2000 movie and the 2016 movie Split, in which James McAvoy played a character with dissociative identity disorder. Willis played Dunn again in his second superhero movie, but Glass has nothing in common with the Marvel Cinematic Universe or any other modern superhero movie. In the last part of his comic book trilogy, Shyamalan combined the casts of Unbreakable and Split, making his own crossover the same year that Avengers Endgame came out. The story was very different from The Sixth Sense, but it was great great to see Willis and a bunch of other great actors work together again. What we can be assured of is that Assassin will definitely live up to its hype. Unfortunately, that is all we have for today. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, cheers.